In February 1967, the Singapore government announced that they would introduce national service to boost the numbers in their armed forces. It was introduced at a time when the fledgling nation felt strategically exposed in the region. And so on the 17th of July 1967, the first batch of 900 NS men were enlisted. Members of that first intake and their army trainers talk about that experience and the impact that national service had on their lives and on Singapore as a nation. We were just after school, after A-levels, looking for a job. When the army started, it's almost automatic we joined the army. Well, the truth of the matter, the family expected me to go to university. What I did was I packed my bag, and when I enlisted, nobody knew. At that point of time, you have an A-level, they were paying you $300 a month to be a recruit. At the same point of time, if you were to become a teacher, you only get $180. The arithmetic is there. At that point of time, the threat was quite imminent in the sense that we have the Indonesian confrontation in the south and not forgetting we also have the Vietnam War in the north. It was a very hot period because the Indonesian confrontation was on and we had to train our battalion men quickly so that they are able to defend Singapore. First thing they call for interview, we have to go for the medical checkup, then they posted us. But before that, they organized some dinner for us because we are the first batch NS. They give some dinner, they invite family, they give a speech for us to know, to understand what is national service is about. Entering national service from civilian life meant big changes for the NS recruits, but it also resulted in changes for the regular army personnel, who had to cope with an influx of hundreds of untrained civilians. First thing is, I get my first haircut, the, the so-called 4 by 2 haircut. I quite really cannot accept the sight, <laughs> and I think I look funny, but at the end of the day, all of us looks the same. Today, the site of the first NS Army camp is a public park called Taman Jurong Greens, and members of that first NS intake gathered to revisit their old parade grounds. All right, where I'm standing right now, this is where uh, the uh, three SR or the 3rd Battalion or the Singapore Infantry Regiment were located. I think four SR were definitely there. And of course, at that time, there's no road, you know? Yeah, no there's road. no dividing road here, right? And we are slightly on the higher ground. Yeah. You remember from the main road, we have to climb up the steps. Yeah, 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 yeah. We carry the, you know, the Water. bed and the cupboard and all that, uh -huh, up to four story, right? <laughs> at that time, we are the, you know, uh, we are the GD men, put it that way, you know, as officers and NCOs. It is basically a housing development board flat of seven story high. They were all actually one rumor, one rumor, one room flat, you know, but all have been broken up into dormitories. Each dormitory can accommodate a platoon of about 40 soldiers. We had 18 years old who had come in to be trained into fighting soldiers. We knew their background. We knew what they thought about army life, of being a soldier. After six months of basic training, we know they liked the army because after two months when they joined, they lost weight. After that, they put on weight. Even their families couldn't recognize them. Our training starts every morning at 6 a.m. with what we call IPPT. That is our morning physical fitness build-up. 
Then we'll have breakfast, and at 730 sharp, we go on parade to account for the men. And at 8 o'clock, we will start our training. Normally, our training will end around 9. By the time we hit our bed, it will be around 10, 11 o'clock. Most of the recruits, they do not know how to speak English. So we have got uh, English language classes being conducted for them. Drill words are in Malay. Therefore, whether you are Chinese, Malay, Indian or Eurasian, only one kind of language that is Malay is used. So how do these veterans view national service today? From yesterday to today, there is a great difference because of the advance of Singapore, advance of technology, and in the old days, we used strengths and sweats to go through training, but today, the people use brains. I would say the training is slightly less tough in bracket than the first or the second batch. Nowadays, the living area are posh, the beds are easier to sleep on rather than those in the early stage. Previously, the bed is made up of thin rubber, but now the mattress is made from king coil. I still remember that uh, the mortar men, they have to carry the barrel on their back. Yeah, they have to carry the mortar base on their back and they have to walk and run. While nowadays, what I saw, they pull by the truck. It made all our young people aware that they had a stake to protect their families and to protect this country. The place where I live, I experience very often there are gang clashes. They are fighting to gain more territory. In fact, after national service was implemented, gangsterism began to diminish. So I think national service did something good and changed the mentality of the younger generation. My time, we used to stay one area belong to the Malay, one area belong to the Chinese, one area belong to the Indian. Then once you are in the national service, you mix around. So we made a lot of friends. I was able to mix with people of very, very diverse backgrounds, sleeping together with Indian boys, Malay boys, Chinese boys, not of my social background. There were people who never even had a good primary six education, but nonetheless, very, very street smart. And you can see that when you're out in the field. The book smart people and the street smart people, they are completely different. We were people from different racial background, religious background, uh, different kind of jobs. And it was equally important that we gel our citizens together and make them Singaporeans. Today, people understand that the defence of our country is not just military defence. It has something more, much, much more to do with psychological strength, your diplomatic strength that you need to have, your economic strength. It's what we call total defence.